Assalamu alaikum and hello to everyone. Today, we are from group 1. We'll present our mini project, which is Manning Roughness Coefficient. Hopefully, after watching this video, you guys can know how we conduct the experiment and what do we get from the experiment. Okay, I will talk about the introduction and the problem we met in our Manning Roughnesses Coefficient experiment. First part, introduction. Manning Roughnesses Coefficient is an important characteristic in hydraulic, especially in channel flows. So the goal of this experiment was to find the characteristic varies with flow depth, with channel alignment, and the degree of obstructions. In this experiment, we use lap flume to test straight and bending situation, use cement to cover parts of channel, and just control the waft to change flow rate. Second part, the problem we met. As for the problem we met is that the sister sediment would flow on water survey so that it's hard to clamp them. And under that sand bottom make flow depth uncertain. In that condition, we had to try our best to insert sister sediment into sand deeply, then clamp by black tap on the top. And about the bottom, we can only measure several depth and got the average. Then next is my roommate's show time. Okay, now I will proceed with the apparatus that have been used during this project. First, we use branch hydraulic flume to determine the flow of depth with channel alignment as stated in the objective of our mini project. Next, we use polystyrene as an obstruction because we need to determine the manning roughness coefficient with different degree of obstructions. Lastly, we use current meter to determine the velocity of the flow in straight channel and branch channel. Next, uh, I will present about the procedure of the experiment. So, for the first part, we would like to find out whether the Manning roughness coefficient varies with variation of flow depth or not. First, we open the valve of the hydraulic flume and we let the water to flow for some time. Then, we measure the flow depth of the channel by using the method as shown in the video. We measure the flow depth at four different points along the channel and we calculate the average of it. After that, we measure the velocity of the flow by using current meter. The velocity obtained from that current meter was recorded. The same steps as before were repeated by using different values of flow depth. In our case, we took another two values of flow depth. For each value, we measure the velocity of the flow by using the current meter and then the obtained velocity was recorded. Move on to the second part, we want to investigate whether Manning Roughness Coefficient varies with channel alignment or not. At a certain flow depth, we use the branch type of channel. After the channel was set up, the water flow in the channel was observed. Then. We measure the velocity of the flow by using the current meter. The obtained velocity was recorded. 
we repeated the previous steps by using a straight channel. Again, the velocity of the flow was recorded. And for the last part of our experiment, we would like to find out whether Manning roughness coefficient varies with different degree of obstruction or not. First, we cut the polystyrene so that we get three parts of it. The required parts should be equal in terms of their base and width, but not necessarily equal in height. The height of them will just to be higher than the flow depth. After that, those three parts of polystyrene were attached to the channel wall by using tape as shown in the video. We let the water to flow and after some time, we measure the velocity of flow at the partially obstructed area by using current meter. The steps were repeated by removing one by one part of the polystyrene and for each condition, we measure the velocity of flow and record it. Now, we shall look at the results of the experiment. All the results depend on the Manning's formula, which is shown as in the slide. For the first objective, which is depth of flow, we have taken the average depth after we have repeated the experiment for three times. We use increasing depth of flow. So from the result, we can see that when the depth of flow increases, the end value decreases. For the second objective, which is the channel alignment, we repeated the experiment for two times using straight channel and curved channel. We can see that the velocity for the straight channel is lower than the velocity of the curved channel. And when the velocity increases, the end value decreases. While for the last objective, which is the obstruction, we use polystyrene as the obstruction. We use the polystyrene to decrease the width of the channel. From the results, we can see that the when the width of the channel decreases, the end value also decreases. Finally, we come to the last part of our presentation, which is the conclusion. We conclude that Manning roughness coefficient varied with flow depth, channel alignment, and degree of obstruction. In a nutshell, the objective of our experiment was achieved. That's all from our group. Hope you enjoy watching the video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.